am Quentin Cafier and I am a French photographer specialized in studio work. During this lockdown event, I am stuck at home and I cannot go to my studio when I have all my gears and all my shooting habits. So to avoid get depressed, I have to find a way to keep shooting at home and I will share some of my tips with you. Um, let's talk about the gears. I am lucky enough to have my camera and to have all my lenses there, so it's not an issue. But I do not have any lightning gears except a very basic reflector with a white um, side and a silver side. So I will need to shoot everything in wall natural light. I think this very specific time can be a nice opportunity to step out of your comfort zone. So I will try myself to a brand new kind of portrait, the surprise shot. Waifu! 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 Oh, Waifu! Ah, uh, well, I have to be honest with myself, it was not a good idea. So, I'm gonna try something different. Uh, let's step to the self-portrait. No. I won't do that, so... <laughs> uh, no, rather jump directly to the step three. It's the natural light indoor portrait. I am using the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV and uh, I think the perfect lens for portraits is the 85mm 1.2. Um, not only the focal length is perfect to shoot a nice portrait without uh, deforming the face, but also the, the opening at 1.2 allows to you uh, to create a very shallow depth of field and it's very good to isolate your subjects when you are shooting in a space that is not designed to be a uh, shooting space. Okay, now I have to find the best spot to make this shooting. So uh, it's a nice way to have a new look at my apartment. And uh, I checked a little bit and I soon discovered that the best option is the living room. There is this wall that is in a teal blue color that is complementary to the skin tone. So that's very nice to, to pop your character out of the background. And also this is the easiest way to make some space because I just need to put some uh, canvas on the walls, move the table, and I have enough space to make a portrait. Here is a tip. Uh, if you have issues finding a um, wide enough background, what you can do is that if you have some space behind you, you can use a longer focal length and you get far away from your model because in this situation, you will compress the distance between the character and the background and it will help you to give the impression of having a bigger background. Another good point is this wall is facing a big French door leading to a balcony so it can provide a lot of soft light all day long. Here on this image you can see that the light is coming from behind me and providing a soft light that is creating a nice lighting without shadow. Now that I choose my spot, uh, I have to remember that the only thing I can do to control the lightning is to choose the right time to shoot. Uh, every time I'm shooting on location, I spend some time trying to understand what is the lighting scheme. Uh, for example, how the sun is moving, what kind of reflection is creating, what kind of shades is casting. And with all this, I can decide when is the best time to shoot and I think it will make the difference between a nice shooting and very good shooting. As soon as I start studying the light in my living room, I realized that most of the shades and most of the reflections were casted on a very low level. So it was obvious that I cannot have a direct sunlight on a standing point of view. So I asked my wife to just uh, lie down on the carpet and to bath herself in the direct natural light. In this specific situation, we have all the direct light in the face and almost nothing on the background so the background gets very dark and you have a very contrasted image. If you don't like it, if you want something a little bit smoother, one of the best options to lower the contrast is to use diffuser gel like this one. If you don't have it, you can use like baking paper and 
it will do the same and everyone does it in the kitchen. On this image what I really like is that the direct sunlight is uh, reflecting on the wall whereas the rest of the model is lighted by the ambient light that is bouncing everywhere in the flat. So it gives you something softer but with this bluish tint on the side and uh, I think it's a very powerful effect. If you want to do something like this but you don't have a painted wall it's quite easy because you can use a color cloth that you put on your wall. For those lucky enough to have a balcony, it's obviously the best place to create some sunny portraits, uh, especially if your balcony is facing the sunrise or the sunset. In my opinion, uh, I like when the model is facing the light, especially when you can create a nice triangle under the eye. It makes the face strong, readable, and with the light and shadows, you can check the slightest expression. I don't like when you face the other side because I think it's creating a lot of shades and lightnings and um, it's not readable enough. They make it simple, make it clear. This kind of images can be very powerful both in color and black and white as soon as we can manage the contrast. And one of the easiest ways to do so is to use a very basic reflector. If you don't have it with you, it's very simple. You can also use aluminum foil, you can use white cardboard, anything that can boost the light to the shadowy areas. Here is something very important that you have to know when you are using a reflector to unblock the shadows, especially when the light comes from the side. Don't use it from under because the light from under is always unnatural and not very pretty. So rather hold it up and you will bounce the light from above. If you live in a tiny flat, maybe you won't even find any empty wall or spot that can be used at the background. There is still an option and it's called the window background. A few years ago, I was supposed to make the portrait of a writer during an interview and we were in this untidy office. There were stuff everywhere and this was not what the newspaper was looking for. So I asked the writer to stand in front of the window and I used it as the background. Because the camera now has a very nice dynamic range, it was easy for me to just unblock the shadow with a reflector and uh, play with the flares and add these nice and moody portraits. So thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it and that it gives you a lot of ideas to create nice indoor portraits during this time. Bye!